we're talking about Precision Oncology Ireland today and within that we're talking about your research to do with bacteria and cancer. Can you tell me a bit about that? Yeah, I guess it's not that obvious that people would need to think about bacteria in, in the context of cancer patients, but I guess as the years have gone on, people are realizing that bacteria are in lots of places in our bodies and there are quite a lot of them there and that they do influence what's going on in our normal body activity anyway. So I suppose recently people are realizing that, you know, cancer patients also have bacteria and if they are there then where are they in a cancer patient and what are they doing and what types of bacteria are they so re really it's a case of like are they there and you know are they for example just in the gut where everybody knows we all have bacteria or could they also be inside the tumors themselves as well and if they are there uh, do they look the same as uh, somebody who doesn't have cancer or do they look different and if that's the case then why are they different and I suppose ultimately at the end of the day we want to see if there's a difference can we make use of that difference so in terms of treatment or management can we make use of it and it looks like we should be able to. So that's, that, that's why we're looking at it I guess from, from two aspects one what's there and what does it look like and then two what can we do about it. So there's the what and the so what. And how would you go about doing that then? Can you tell me a little bit about that? Uh, so first of all, we thankfully got some um, money uh, to go and have a look at what bacteria are um, in patients and then go and examine in the lab uh, what these bacteria are in terms of their numbers and um, what different types are there and compare them with people who don't have cancer. And then if you can use our computer technology to go and paint a picture okay. of here's your average healthy person and what their bacterial map looks like yeah. uh, versus somebody with a certain type of cancer and you look at their bacterial map and you see, OK, there's this difference here. So let's target that difference. Okay. So all cancer treatments are about trying to go and kill cancer cells or any cells related to cancer but very importantly, leaving all the healthy tissues and organs and everything alone. So I mean, that's every single cancer treatment out there is trying to do that. So they need to identify that this cancer treatment will kill the cancer or tumor related cells, but will leave all the healthy parts of the body alone. Yeah. So it's a very similar strategy. We're first identifying what's the difference yeah. and then saying, now we know the difference. What will we go and target to, to, to you know, yeah. see here's different, let, let, let's go target that. Okay. And so, like, I've had cancer and I've had the traditional treatments, which, like, were brutal, I suppose. If my cancer was to recur, how, how potentially would my treatment be different, you know, in... I don't know, 10 years down the line or something. Yeah, so the, the, the goal would be that we reach a point where, let's say, initially you could identify that maybe uh, the cancer is going to recur, but we catch it before it occurs. So, for okay. example, if we know the map of a, a person's healthy bacteria and then we spot that there's unhealthy bacteria yeah. appearing, okay. um, that's like an early warning sign of some sort and then we can go and you know start treatment of some kind it might be the traditional treatment but it might be uh, much earlier and much uh, more effective in, in that case um, or indeed it might just be a case of that we know that a person with a tumor has a certain map of bacteria yeah. and we could go and for example change the bacteria that are there so that it's no longer helping the tumor to grow we might actually have a case of that change of bacteria might change the tumor's ability to grow. Or indeed, we might just go and exploit the fact that these bacteria, uh, when you have a person with these bacteria, you don't see cancer. So let's add more of these bacteria. Or it might just be eliminating certain bacteria. Or slightly further off in the future, I guess, there'll be a case of that, use them directly for treatment. So it might be a case of that we, we already have an idea that patients who have a certain bacterial map respond much better to certain treatments especially the modern treatments like some of the the immune yes. treatments so therefore you could just boost your immune treatment by changing the bacterial map of that patient um, 
or slightly further off again, but actually it's, it's, it's not that science fiction anymore. Okay. We now have very good tools to engineer bacteria and we turn yeah. them into cancer fighting um, little bio factories, yeah. we, we would call them. So if they're inside a tumor or maybe uh, elsewhere in the body, we can engineer them to start pumping out anti-cancer agents but quite yeah. harmlessly. So in yeah. terms of if you have a lot of bacteria in a tumour, you can get them to make a lot of drug in a tumour and they won't be anywhere else in the body. Okay. So there's a lot of what we can do if we can really get a good handle on what the bacteria look like and what they're doing. Okay. And the bacteria that, say, would be in a tumour, would that be the same bacteria as would be in the rest of my body or would it be different? So they, they would also be in other parts of your body quite often but um, let's say the map should look very different so it should be a case of that we know the map of the tumor bacteria we know it's really really different from the map in other parts of the body so we can use that difference okay yeah. very good mm, that's fascinating so how would it benefit me and other patients in the future this whole thing yeah, yeah. so once we have an idea, so I mean, I'll, I'll be straight up and say we won't really know until we discover exactly what's going on. But okay. we're already working on this foundational knowledge and then we'll know, OK, this is what the map looks like in different types of people. So we could then use it to help, um, as I briefly mentioned earlier, it could be a case of early warning signs okay. that perhaps there's a change in the bacterial map here. Maybe the tumour is considering re regrowing. Let's do something about it. Or it might be a case of that um, in the context of precision oncology, which is a, a modern used term um, to try and be a bit smarter about how we treat patients. Yeah. So we know that not all patients are the same. Yeah. We already know that not all patients respond to treatments in the same ways. Mm -hmm. So we want, using precision oncology, we want to go and reach a point where we say, I'm developing a map of this particular person. And I know it's bacterial map. I know the genetic makeup of the person. I know these potential cancer genes are there or they're not there. And using all these maps of the patient, I'm going to make a treatment that's suitable just for this patient. So we're not going to put that patient through any nasty treatments that don't work because yes. they'll do more harm than good. Yeah. And we will go straight to the treatment that will work. So we build up all the maps. We've got precision picture then of that patient and we'll go straight and we will give only what will work. We will not give put, put a poor patient through all these treatments that don't have that much effect and go straight to the one that does work. So there is that aspect of it alone. So the, the precision oncology aspect yeah. can, can only be good. Uh, and separate of that, then we also aim to just make brand new treatments that don't exist today, okay. but hopefully will exist tomorrow. Super. That is fascinating. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you. Brilliant. It's, it's only Thank from you. people like you asking yeah. questions like this that we, we start thinking differently. Think. Otherwise, you just leave us Our off and we'll think like scientists, which is so, not well, a good yes, thing. And I suppose it's a good thing to be able to explain it in plain English, isn't it? Correct. You know? Well, also, yeah. also you, you, you also need to tell us what yeah. the needs yeah. are and, yeah. and, and what we need to do right. yes. and, and yeah. what's wrong. I mean, us, us as scientists, we, we don't know what's wrong uh, a, a lot of the time, given the big picture of, of what's yes. going on with cancer patients. Yeah. So yeah. You guys know. You guys tell us what you want, and, yeah. and it'll change our 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 light bulbs to yes, uh, what yeah, we think yeah. is great. Actually, isn't so great. But actually, what could be great is what you tell. Well, targeted. I suppose as you say, precision and targeted is what you want, rather than you know, feeling your whole body being yeah. ill. You know, because it's the cancer treatment really that makes you ill. Correct. Not the uh, cancer as, itself. As, <laughs> as, as, as sometimes, as sometimes we as scientists Just, or or clinicians might might forget is that it's quite easy to kill off a tumour but you just kill the patient but as well. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So it's it's really, it's keeping the patient healthy is the first it's, thing yes, that, that, yeah. that we need to keep yeah. in mind and then finding a suitable way to, to kill the tumour while tumor. keeping the patient yes. uh, happy Absolutely. and healthy. Yeah. Mm. Good, great. I think that's me done. Thank really. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That was fascinating. You didn't actually get, get to speak much there. I just yeah. did my No, that's fine. That was the plan. <laughs>